Hello guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we would see on what is models in DBT and the basic stuff which we can do with SQL as well as Python with models in DBT. So in the last video, we have, been, we have seen how to create a project. So using dbt in it, we have created the project. I mean, we have created a Postgres project, right? Because I've installed dbt Postgres alone. So I can create that. If I want Athena, dbt Athena and dbt Snowflake and all, I have installed dbt Athena and all using pip install. To know how to install, you can watch my introduction video. So I've installed it and you know, like we have created a project like this. I mean, once we do dbt in it, it asks all the details and it creates the project like this. And dbt pro projects.yaml, this is where all the configurations have been mentioned, the name of the project, the version, the profile, uh, the model path, analysis path. In this video, we will see what is models and all. So the test path. In the next videos, we will see what is macros, what is test, what is seeds, what is snapshots and everything. So in case if you want to clean, when we have a command called dbt clean, when we run the dbt clean, what and all folders it has to uh, remove. So that things are mentioned here. In the models, for this project, our project name, and in this uh, folder name, if you go inside the models, we have examples folder. That's what it has created. Here we can mention all the configuration information for this example folder. So if you want, you can create some other folder as well and create the multiple models inside that. And you can give the configuration as well. I mean, what kind of configuration means? What should be the target table type? What should be the database schema and all those kind of details can be mentioned here as well. This is option one or else you can mention even in the config as well here as well. So let's see one by one. Okay. So what is model model before knowing what is model dbt supports two types of models. One is Python model and another is SQL model. SQL model is very widely used because not all the target databases supports the Python models because when you run it executes on the target, right? For suppose you can't run a Python code and PostgreSQL. You can run the Python code on the Spark cluster. I mean the data breaks or in the Snowflake and all. So dbt supports two types of models. One is SQL and another is Python. So here if you see they have created a file dot SQL in inside which you can write down the select statement whatever you want and how complex you want based on the requirement and save it so when you run this particular file a target table gets created with the file name so that is called model model is nothing but a sql statement inside a dot sql file when you run it a target table gets created whether that whether it's a target table or view you can configure it inside this config so this is what in the previous projects I have edited and created new project based on my requirement. So firstly, I just wanted to show you I have one audit table. Uh, I'll tell you why, why and where we are using audit table and I have some restaurant table, menu tables and customers orders. It kind of some restaurant related information or a restaurant related data model I have created inside which I have all the insert statement I have executed and I have data in it. So if you see my database name is YouTube. And in the public schema, I have these tables. One is audit and all the restaurant orders, menus, customers and all these kind of uh, tables we have. So let's try to understand what and all we can do with models. Not everything, only few things and uh, like incremental models and uh, snapshot models and more in depth will be covered in the next videos. So this is what my source data is. I just wanted to show you my source data. I have these kind of tables. Okay. In my Postgres, that's it. So now let me go to my new folder, which I have created. So this is my new. So I, I renamed the, I created a new folder called YouTube explain inside which I have created one SQL file. And in this SQL file, let's ignore this. If you see, I just joined two tables. If you see in the model, I, instead of mentioning directly from youtube.customers, youtube.orders, I am using this kind of an convention. So what is this source of YouTube customers? So if you go to schema file for the first argument is the database name and the second argument is the table name. So if you go to the schema.yaml file, so inside sources, the name is YouTube. I am saying I have all these tables. So wherever I want to refer, I can just directly refer the YouTube dot restaurant, YouTube menu, YouTube customer, YouTube orders, YouTube order details, something like that. And the schema name, as I mentioned public, it will always refer to the public here. And the database name is YouTube for sub. I mean, why if you, you can ask me 
why do you want to mention all this kind of yaml like dbt firstly dbt follow this kind of approach and secondly why is it advantages is for suppose in the future when you are migrating from dev to prod let's assume your database name has changed so instead of in case if you don't follow this approach in each and every sql file if you give the database name dot table name you have to edit everything but if you have this approach you can just change the database name here to prod youtube that's it and and we are aliasing this database name with the name as youtube so uh, we we don't need to change each and every file so this is the major advantage on why we have to and why dbt follows this kind of approach that's it so that's what so if you are reading from any source file or from a database directly from you can use like source of the deep data, the name which we have given in the schema this particular name and the table names whatever you want so here i'm just joining these two tables that's it on customer id there's a very simple sql that's one thing we need to know and also here there is a config block so what am i doing here if you see the output of this sql statement you know like when you run this particular sql file it creates a table or a view whatever you want right now i mentioned materialized equal to table so it creates a table if i mention view here it creates a view also in dbt projects.yml in this section under models the project name the folder name right now i gave here examples it should be youtube explain explain and here also whatever the details you give you can mention all the configuration information which you have mentioned here even in the projects.yml and it will be and whatever details you mention from 36th line will be applicable to this folder so that's one thing so here if you see i'm saying the output of this sql statement should be created a table and enable equal to true what does this mean so if you keep false when you run uh, the this particular folder the both will run when you run for this project everything will run in case if you give enable equal to false this particular sql statement execution will be skipped so it is not enabled so like you can give any kind of tags as well so all the customer related uh, files can have one tag all the orders related can have one kind of tag pre hook and post hook so here you can give multiple sql statements in an array where i mean right now i am using it for logging purpose or uh, public dot audit log where i am saying uh, pre hook means before executing this select statement before creating a table with this select statement the pre hook gets executed and then this select executes and creates a table and then the post hook gets executed so in case if you want to do some audit or anything we can use pre hook or in case if you want to delete something before executing the sql based on the business requirement you can use this so post hook we is used after the uh, file has been uh, after the sql has been executed and the table gets created pre hook before executing this particular sql in this uh, model file and what is the da target database name you want to create your um, table on and what is alias if you want to uh, rename it something else apart from this particular sql file name then you can alias this as well so these are the few parameters which we can pass and there are multiple options for incremental and for snapshot and all we can pass more uh, information in this config i'll tell you in those specific videos that's it so you know in case if you want to refer a specific table which exists in the database we have a schema.yml inside which we can mention the name of that the database schema and the tables so i mean why we and all i have already explained and now we have another sql file if you see here what am i doing select statement from customer orders which is this one i am using the ref word and i am doing some group by select statement here i didn't pass anything i just passed the materialized equal to table so please create the output as a table only that's it so here the ref means it is referring to one of the table which got created or it is referring to one of the model which got created so the customer order first executes and then order by month executes dbt internally creates the tag and internally it, it handles on which sql file to execute first and which sql file to execute next so the first customer orders will execute and then orders by month will execute because the in the orders by month the customer orders is dependent so first the customer order execute so in case if you want to refer to a table which does not exist in the database but which we are creating 
then you can refer with the ref keyword that's it so you know like we have the projects.yaml file inside which uh, the projects.yaml file is created uh, by dbt see while we are creating the project when you do dbt in it it asks for the name the database name host name password and everything right so everything gets created in the projects.yaml so the target information where these particular models needs to be executed or created will be fetched from this profiles.yaml so that's profiles.yaml is useful so you understand what is the purpose of dbt project.yaml which is where the config once is config information and the cleanup information and the paths of the models the analysis folder what is analysis folder what is test folder what is seed folder we'll see everything all this in the next videos so all these paths and everything is mentioned in the dbt profiles.yaml profile.yaml is for target and you know inside the models we can create the sql files and we can give the config information like this so now let's run it and see so before that i'll show you some comments so now let's see some dbt comments so if you see dbt clean so when you run this command in the dbt profiles.yaml you are mentioned to clean up these two directories so it gets deleted the targets and dbt packages so when i run it we will not have the target so the target is gone like that so you, to clean up some directories we can use dbt clean and also we have another command called dbt compile so when you use dbt compile so we can't take this particular sql statement and execute in our target because the source and all is dbt related it's not the postgre related so this is converted into youtube.schema.customers youtube.public.order something like that so that conversion is happened when you you can just do dbt compile and you can check how my your target sql statement will look like which comes under the target folder so when you run dbt compile see the target folder is created inside compiles and in this if you can so this is how the final sql will be so this is how the final sql will be okay now when you do dbt run then it first compiles and then creates it dbt compile will just compile dbt run will just first compile and then create and when you do dbt run another folder along with compile run gets created inside which it will have the create uh, ddl statement as well let's see that so now when you do dbt run see it, it, it has executed this and these are the number of rows created in this customer orders table these are the number of rows created in this orders by month table we can view it and if you see this folder got created and this is the actual ddl which got created create table as and the select statement this is the actual ddl which got created see like this so now if you go to postgres we can view those so now if i execute we'll have the data see we have the data and what we have seen so the customer orders table got created we can see the data clearly so this is how this is an high level and which we need to know on models in dbt and the next thing is not only sql dbt also supports python but not on every database we can't execute the python code on postgre right we can't execute python code in mysql and all it needs sql only so like for suppose uh, if you take data bricks or snowflake it supports python so in those kind of clusters uh, you can use dbt python as well i'll show you that in another video but let's know let's let me give you some pointers on high level as we are covering up the models let's see how the python models will work in dbt so if you see so this is how you need to create yeah, i mean the python model uses spark as well as pandas you can use both and the standardization of the code is same here however we are creating dot sql files now we have to create dot py files in case if you want to go with dbt python module file, file name dot py so the target table name will be the file name again so it will have the method called def models it will have two arguments dbt comma session this session is used for the platform for suppose if you are running on databricks or the session will have all the information related to the databricks and dbt argument is needed because all the methods uh, whatever you want to use will be fetched from this dbt i mean the context of dbt will be with this dbt variable if you see the configuration we are setting so this argument dbt is used dbt.config this is how we set all the arguments similarly you can set the schema 
pre hook post hook and everything and now we are reading the table by using the reference not from the source similarly you can read from the source also uh, dbt dot source of same like the database name comma uh, table name How, as per what we have given the schema dot yaml so in case if it is a uh, so all the methods which are related to dbt we extract from this dbt variable which is the first argument in this model so here if you see if it's increment model then we are say, creating a sql string and then we are filtering out that's it and we are returning so the only thing we need to know is we will have a method in every dot .py file a method named model it will have two arguments and it will return the data frame you can convert this spark to python and again python to spark and return the data frame that's it and another example here if you see it is using some external model python model so if you see it is using holidays module and the same method name the configuration if you see the it is using the packages equal to holidays as we are using external package we have to mention package equal to holidays and here we are referring to one table which is created by dbt only so dbt dot ref of and this data frame and again we are converting the spark data frame to pandas and again we are doing some kind of uh, filter operation and again to the spark and return and also few other examples here in case if you have multiple packages which you want to use you can mention like uh, inside the config package equal to all these and all those package details and all you can even mention in the config.yaml file as well inside the models we can create the con yaml file and inside which we can give the packages as well so i mean when to go with the uh, python module with dbt is which you when you can't do the things with sql that time we have to go with the python model if you have more complex logics which can be done only with the python then you have to go with the dbt python or else the sql works so let's check out some pointers okay or you dbt python model enables transformation that sql alone can't handle leveraging the python rich ecosystem for data science and statistics okay so python models are defined in a function that returns the transformed data frame we know right we saw so this is defined in a function that returns the transformed data final data frame the output the target data will be nothing but this data frame whatever you are returning that's it and also typical python model includes the dbt and session arguments which we saw right it includes two arguments dbt and session dbt handles the project context while session connects to the data platform means python backend i mean the the data bricks one or the snowflake one if you see python models are configured similar to sql models including materialization tags tests and everything we'll see what is test and all if you see in case if you want to read the reference file dbt.ref dbt.source to directly read a table from the source which you need to mention in the schema.yml so python model supports data frames such as snowpark pyspark or pandas depending on the platform and also the configuration method so it's similarly like we have the same dbt.yml i mean we don't do much like we just create another folder inside with we, we create a .py files and everything is read from the project.yml profile.yml and, and all so in case if you want to create some custom udfs you can create those udfs and use in case if you want to use some third packages like we have seen example for holidays right you can use some third third party packages and all in case if you want to use some other code which your project or a company has created you can make it into a python package and refer that as well and also there are some limitations uh, to this python dbt models one is performance and cost the sql part is much faster and the python dbt is little slower so the, however when the process is slow the cost increases and there is some syntax complexity it's not that easy as sql and also lack of print support and all and you have to use some alternatives to the print based on the platform which you are using so this is what the dbt python is uh, dbt python models will look like which we have seen the examples as well but i'll show you the hands on as well by connecting to the snowflake in another in one of the other video so this is what we need to know on high level what models is that's it thank you so much for watching